Uh, hey, good morning. This is Ken from KS Brakes, and today we're here at Rempart again on the grounds of VIR, and uh, we're pretty lucky. Uh, today we get to look at a brake swap or uh, some brake work on a new 992 GT3. So we uh, got a hold of the owner, and he was happy to uh, help us out. And what he, he tracks his car regularly here on the north or southeast. Uh, and they always need good brakes on a Porsche. So there's a couple things to show about uh, the Giratus product we have here. This is a Porsche GT3 with iron brakes. That has those big six piston Brembo calipers in the front, and I guess the rear is a four piston caliper. Uh, two piece brake rotors made by Porsche. And so what we're doing for track use is we're gonna install uh, much stronger brake pads, and we're gonna install Girodisc uh, two piece rotors uh, a couple of things are different as you can see they're slotted but if you come in closer I'll show you some of the differences and some of the things that uh, some of the things that we just see uh, in this product so this is the original Porsche rotor that comes on the car as you can tell it's cross drilled uh, that's generally a no-no for the track I mean you can already see in just uh, looks like one or two events all the holes are filling up with brake pad material and additionally um, Cracks are forming more easily at these holes. So for track use, we really don't want to have drilled rotors. Uh, Porsche puts them on there because, well, you like how they look and they do look pretty cool. But anyway, this is a two piece front rotor. Uh, as you can see, it's what they call a pin drive style. There's pins out of the hat, hat section into the disc. So while that's good for the performance of the rotor, the repair is different. In this case, you cannot just replace the outer part of the rotor. You have to replace the entire assembly. So uh, we would like to improve the rotor if we can. And we'll show you the Giro stuff in a minute. But a couple other things. You'll notice this is a curved vein rotor. Uh, as you can see, those, those cooling veins are angled. So that makes them directional, uh, left and right. And then you can see on this one, this is the left. We actually did the other side of the car, obviously, already. That's how we're doing the comparison. Another thing, uh, this kind of dispels a bit of a rumor or something that's been going around forever, is people say, oh, the Porsche drill rotors, the holes are cast in. That's nonsense. Uh, you can only drill a hole. You would never have a tool like that to, uh, for iron. But what you can see is this is not the same as, your, as a normal, uh, <clears throat> you know, drill rotor you see on maybe eBay. You can even see where Porsche puts in a relief in that cooling vein so that when they drill those holes, there's there's nothing getting hit. The hole needs to be in between the veins. You wouldn't want a hole going through that cooling vein, of course. So this is not quite the same thing. So now we'll take a quick look at the Geodisc rotor. It's a two-piece assembly. In this case, the center hat's aluminum. The outer, of course, is cast iron. And it's a floating rotor. So there's, you can see on the back, it's also a curved vein disc. In this case, it's not drilled, so we don't have to worry about that. But this is a, probably a 72 or 84 vein disc. It's quite large. Uh, and then you can see this is this uh, hardware, and then there's anti-rattle. So the, the rotor is actually floating on the hat, so it can expand and contract independently. Uh, that's what iron likes to do when it gets hot. So that just helps the brake rotor uh, work better and last longer. It's, uh, that's the reason for that. So, so we're going to show you a couple things with the car since it's new. So in our 992 GT3, obviously it's the center lock wheels. And uh, not only does it take a giant torque wrench to crack them loose, but uh, you can come on in and take a look at this. This is a new sort of bolt assembly. I'll let Aaron talk about that. I mean, you can see it's covered with uh, so this gray anti-seize. but uh, This looks like um, the new lock assembly. These uh, go in and lock in place. There's splines inside of here. Um, Porsche recommends not to use an impact gun on these for obvious reasons. It's pretty delicate. It's pretty expensive. You wouldn't want to mess that up. And also this grease um, uh, is very hard to get off anything. So <laughs> at all costs, avoid getting it. And then of course, when you pull your wheels off and especially if you have carbon ceramics, be very careful not to scratch your rotor. There are some tools where you can um, kind of put a central lug on here we find it easier just to to be careful okay so let's uh take a look at the front brakes on this car uh first thing is you'll see there's just a couple of set screws that hold the rotor in place on the hub uh and then we need to this is a monoblock caliper so we need to push the pads back in now 
to get the pistons all the way seated so we can do the pad swap. So we pull out those set screws and then uh, we can go around the other side here. So the T20 on the set screws here. And then this is a monoblock caliper, so it does have to come off to get the pads off. That's uh, uh, a little inconvenient at times, but still a nice big brake setup. You have two T55s. Those are screwed into aluminum, so we want to torque them properly on the way back in. Then there's a brake line bracket and stuff to get loose. But before we do that, we're simply going to get these brake pads pushed back in to get the piston seated and have it all ready to, ready to go when we get the caliper off. We check the uh, fluid level in the master cylinder if your car is um, brand new. Just be sure that it's not overfilled because when you push these back, you'll be pushing fluid into the master. There's uh, two uh, 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold this brake line on. It's a hard line, so you can't remove the caliper. You must remove these to get the brake line free so you can pull the caliper off. I already cracked them loose. So I crack these loose. I always do these by hand. It's going into aluminum. So you will need to find a way to support the caliper. Um, or if you're doing this with a friend, you can have your friend do the rotor swap. But after we get this off, you'll be able to pull the rotor and the pads. Also, this car, the um, brake pad sensors have been removed already. That would be an extra step if you have a um, stock car. We don't run brake pad sensors on track pads. So there's an extra plug back here. You can see the um, brake pad sensor is already zip tied out of the way, which we recommend to do. So to pull these old pads out, they come out like so. And Ken's going to hand us some new pads here. You can see these ceramic pucks. Um, on cars with a lot of miles or a lot of heat cycles, these tend to come free and drop. Um, this car, of course, is almost brand new with maybe 2,000 miles and three track days. So they're still pretty tight in there. Just be cautious of that on older cars. So sometimes it takes a, a minute to get the pad. Um, you're working against the spring. And also, if your pistons aren't all the way back, you can be working against those as well. So if, you, if it's not going, take it back out, um, check the pistons, and then try again. And sometimes a little extra force here helps seat it. So those are ready to go now. So now we're going to get the rotor off. we got to remember where these two set screw holes are. That's about it. The rotor comes off. Watch out for the gray death. While we're here for a second, if you want to take a look at the new suspension. Um, so this used to be a McPherson strut. Now it's a double wishbone at the top. Um, that's a first for Porsche, at least on the GT3s. Um, pretty cool. So here's our Giro disc rotor. We know it's the right because it says it's the right. So that's good because get that off of there, out of the way. And this also has a inspection report from Giro disc. Line up our set screw holes and it'll slide right on there. All these screws do is hold the disc flat on the hub to, uh, to install. So they don't need to be, if you over tighten them, you'll be drilling them out the next time.
A reality check. Looks good. Caliper can go back on right on top of that now. So if you push your um, pistons back all the way, this will slide right on. Get one of your bolts. Get it started. Don't tighten one before you get the other one started. Don't make that mistake. And then we'll get the line bracket in, reinstalled. There's two screws on the back and we'll check everything for tightness and we'll go to the rear. All right, so now we're at the rear of the car. Uh, we're gonna do the rear rotor, rotor and pad swap as well. There's not a lot different back here. Um, it's a four piston caliper. It still needs to come off because it's a monoblock caliper. So same basic process. We'll push the pads back in uh, on these uh, caliper bolts and then the pads into the caliper, swap the rotor and off we go. Uh, a couple things you notice, you didn't really see it as much on the front disc, but again, these drilled holes, you get the pad smear off the trailing edge from the track use. That's another good reason to get rid of the drilled rotors and save those for the, save those for the street use. Very good, so we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, there's not a lot this here, like I said, so we'll just go ahead and complete the installation. All right, so we've got the car back together uh, and we're gonna go out and break in the new brakes. Uh, just a couple notes, you know, double check everything, torque everything correctly, etc. because when the brakes don't work, bad things happen. Uh, we have brand new rotors and brand new brake pads, and these are track pads. So the first thing we're gonna do is, well, first thing is when you get in the car, there's gonna be a soft pedal until the pistons get back to pushing the pads against the rotor. So, so make sure the brakes work to get off the lift. Secondly, um, that's a lot of rotor and pad and caliper mass. To break these things in and bend in the pads, you gotta use a little bit of thinking about it. We wanna get things warm and, and kind of worked in a little bit before we actually go through an actual bedding process. So it takes a minute, also it's cold out, we're in the winter here. So you're not gonna get heat in the rotors in the first couple of stops. So some regular braking events, maybe, you know, maybe 10 or some events at, at medium pressure to get the rotors warm and get the pads warm and even maybe the calipers a little bit before you go through a bedding process, that will probably help your initial bedding work more effectively. Uh, if you try to bed these in with cold rotors and hot pads, we have seen that cause issues. You can get some pad smear and vibration, et cetera. So uh, just think about some of those things when you're uh, breaking your brakes for the first time. Uh, I think we're pretty much done. We get to go take a trip around VIR. We'll uh, show you some of the shops here on the premises. Uh, this is Canis Brakes. Thank you very much for watching.